So as we said, two degree of freedom system will have two natural frequencies, and you'll end up with two mode shapes. Okay, a mode shape represents the relative motion of one mass and the other mass. Okay, um, so essentially, if you've got say you've got a two degree of freedom system, you've got one mass that moves by one meter. Okay, this or one millimeter, or whatever. The other mass will move by a certain amount based upon that, that whatever unit that um, mass is. So if it was five millimeters, it'd be five times that set amount. Okay, so it's the relative amplitudes of masses, and the way to do that is you set the amplitude of one of those masses to one, one whatever. It doesn't really matter. One. Okay, and then you find the relative motion of the other mass relative to that one you set for one. And so we end up. What we do is we take our equation of motion that we had. Okay. Remember we had x1 and x2 over here. What I've done is I've divided both sides of the equation by x1. And so obviously that, that x1 divided by x1 obviously is 1. And we end up with x2 divided by x1 on the bottom down here. And what we do is we set this term to be r. And what we're doing is going to, we're going to find r. Okay, so we set that to be r. We end up with this equation. And then what you do is you take each natural frequency that you had, omega 1, omega 2, you insert it into here, and then you solve to find r. Now what omega 1, omega 2, you know, if you've got values for these things, you can work out specifically what those values are in terms of num you know, numerics, but if, if it's in terms of k and m, you can work it out. But obviously what will happen is the k's um, and the m's will often cancel out, so you just end up with numbers here, and you can actually work out what r is. Um, here I've not done that, I've just looked at the, uh, I've kept it in terms of variables. Okay, so by using our found values for omega 1 and omega 2, we can insert them into this equation and solve for r. Okay, and we find two mode shapes, 1 and r1, and 1 and r2. So for the first mode shape, we stick an omega 1 into here. Okay, and you can take the first line of the equation, so it's this term multiplied by 1, minus this term multiplied by r. Okay, so we end up with this term plus this term equals zero, okay, because that's on the other side. And you can rearrange solving for R1, you find that R1 is K1 plus K2 minus M1 omega squared, so it's this term, divided by K2. So that solves for R1, you get a first mode shape, you repeat the process for R2, so you take your omega 2, you stick it into here, okay, and you go through the process solving for R2.